Day flight fans, uh, welcome back to Desk Bound Aviator. Today we're going to take a flight in the Aerobasque G EG 1000 E for Epic. It's, it's the model of the plane is the Epic, and it's the Epic 1000. But this one has the Garmin navigation system, so I call it EG 1000. Um, terrific. Single engine turboprop goes like a bat out of hell. So uh, let's go like a bat out of hell from here in Bellingham, Washington, down to Yakima. Should be an interesting flight. Right down over Seattle, past Mount Rainier. See some nice mountains, beautiful Puget Sound scenery. And we'll explore in this aircraft a feature that uh, my friend Brad asked me to take a look at. Actually, I was taking a look at it. He said it'd be nice to see a video of that. And what I was talking about was the VNAV performance using this G1000 the Garmin system. So uh, let's take a look inside and close up the doors, see if we can do that. Get a little arrow there and we'll hit a down arrow. Oops, let's hit the up arrow and close the doors. We can go up in the cockpit. We tap this little button up here. You can get a panel, and uh, we can get some ground power to the aircraft. And I'll go ahead and give ourselves some fuel. Maybe not quite full, enough to get us down to Yakima comfortably. And we'll put that away. Come down here on our lower panel, and I'll just do three buttons. I'll turn on the two battery switches here and the avionics master. And that'll allow us to get our Garmin 1000 up and running. So I'll zoom in a little closer to that. And the first thing I always like to do is declutter it. I think declutter three times. That takes away all the extraneous stuff that's on the chart. And we'll go to the menu map north up is right. I'm sorry, we'll go to flight plan. Now in flight plan, there was a route that was done previously. So I'm now going to go to menu and I'm going to go down to uh, delete flight plan by using my scroller here and then hit enter. So that takes care of that. Now here's, here's our route. We'll jump over here to uh, Sky Vector. We're going to be going here from Bellingham down over um, CVY, is that? Or CVV, I'm not sure what that waypoint is. It's the termination of the SID coming out of uh, Bellingham. And then we're heading right over Seattle and uh, SeaTac Airport, taking an airway V4 to Ratty. And from Ratty, we're going on into Yakima on a uh, an approach that takes us to Sea Dog. I'll show you that. It's down here on another chart. That's the Yakima Airport chart. But on this one, you can see we're going to fly over here to Sea Dog, and then the route automatically brings us around in a big arc into uh, Zitlu and uh, Zolo and Figru and all these neat Indian names <laughs> into the airport. Okay, so there's Bellingham. We're located up here in a cargo area. We're going to taxi out here to taxiway A, Alpha, and take uh, by the apron B. I uh, forget what B is. Boy. <laughs> On to runway 16 and head to the south. So that's going to be our pattern. We'll leave those down for the time being, jump back in here. All right, so the first thing we need to do is establish a destination. And our destination, we first click this button so that's illuminated. And then we can scroll down to here. And now if I use my mouse wheel, I put the small cursor there, right anywhere over that thing. If I just go up with my mouse wheel, I get a screen that allows me to type in the name of our destination or waypoint. 
waypoint. You can actually type it using the typewriter or the keyboard, uh, as it were, and uh, in this particular model on this particular aircraft. Not all G1000s do this. Okay, so our destination is going to be KYKM. So K, I'll use the space arrow key, the right hand arrow, to space over to the next slot. K Y K M. And then you would think you'd hit, hit the enter key, but you can't do it with the enter key. You have to come down here, press the enter button. And that activates the root for KVLI, KYKM. And now I'll scroll back up here to this line. And I'm going to go to my menu. And uh, I'm not going to go to my menu <laughs> just yet. Get that? I'm going to go to procedures. And uh, I want to select the departure. So I'll do that here. And Kino 6 is the departure, oddly enough. So we'll select that. We're taking off on runway 16. And CVV is the transition. So we'll load that. Bada bing! And there it is. So now we can go down here to. IKM, and we'll put in uh, an airway. Oops, I'm sorry, we're going to go to SEA first. So first we want to just, again, scroll up and put in SEA, enter. Seattle. Okay, and now from SEA, now we've got an airway V4 to ready. And to do an airway, you have to go over to the menu button. This time you do need to go to the menu button. And now you'll see load airway on your list. And you have to be on the waypoint below your last waypoint. So I want to load an airway, you enter that. And you've got a selection of possibilities. The one we want is V4. I can see it in the middle of the list there, so you just scroll down to it and tap enter. Now our transition out of that is going to be ratty. So again, I'll scroll down till I get to ratty and enter that. And load it. And there we go. Scroll away. There's ratty. We'll go down here to KYKM. And uh, let's see, now we want to do an approach. Let's see if we can get Sea Dog as our transition. So we'll do procedure, select approach. There's no star, so we don't have to do an arrival. There's no star at Yakima, so we'll hit uh, enter for approach. And we're going to be landing in Yakima on runway 27, ILS 27, with that long arc. All right, so scroll one down one to there, and we'll hit enter. And Sea Dog is the transition waypoint. Select that, and there it is. Now we'll, uh, we'll establish minimums. We can get that from our approach chart. If we look down here, ILS 27. Yeah, it says the minimums are going to be 200 feet. Now run minimums. Now small arrow. Barrow. Now we skip over and we dial up small arrow again, dial up to 200 feet. If you don't do that right, you'll get messed up like me. All right, load it and activate it. And there we are. Now let's take a look at the flight plan. And you see we've got our airways and we've got some altitudes already set within our approach. Now our beginning uh, to that approach is going to be after Sea Dog, and if we look at the approach plate, you can see that Sea Dog, uh, I think it was, well, XLO. XLO is probably over here. I don't see Sea Dog on this glide slope indicator. 
but our initial altitude, as indicated right here, is going to be 6,000 feet from Sea Dog. And we've got some mountains we're going to cross. So let's come in here and take a look. There's Sea Dog, where I'm pointing right there. So you see what we've got to pass over on our way to Sea Dog. And it looks like we've got 51. We've got 6,400 feet right here. And I don't see anything else higher. So what I'm going to do is establish 7,500 as cruising altitude. And we'll start that by going back up to Sea Dog. And we'll put in. Uh, let's put in 7,000, or let's put in 6,500. Yeah, 7,000. That's fine. So scroll that to 7,000. Gotta go higher than one. And enter that. And we want to come back up to it and enter it again, which designates it fixes it in place, makes it a designated altitude, which is important. All right, now we come back up to our route, and we've got Ratty, which is at the end of uh, our airway. And I believe there's Ratty. So this is the distance we've got to go from there to Sea Dog. So I'm going to say that Ratty, um, Let's make that. Um, let's make that eight thousand feet. Oh, well, let me think about that. We've got Ratty at eight thousand, and we've got Sea Dog at seven. Yeah, that's probably okay. So let's make Ratty eight thousand feet. This is all just figuring this out to demonstrate it properly. There's eight thousand. So we enter that. So come back up to it and enter it again. Now that's designated. All right. Our our first waypoint after taking off from uh, Bellingham is going to be CVV, and so let's make CVV make the altitude there eight thousand as well. I'll scroll that back down there, and then by using my mouse wheel, I'll change that to 8,000. And enter that. And enter it again. So there we go. So now we've got our altitude set, both for cruising and for descending. 8,000 down to Patty. From Patty, we're going to switch over to the approach, and then we're going to descend to 7,000 feet, and then on into Yakima. <coughs> okay, that takes care of that. Uh, now we can skip out a flight plan. We can go back here and just take a look at that. That's done. Let's shift over here. To the PFD, and there's a couple of things we need to do here. We've got ourselves established. The CDI is established on GPS, which is fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and over here on this panel, I'm going to tap the nav button, which will change this role designation to GPS, like so. All right, then I'm going to establish our cruise altitude by tapping the altitude bug brings up a little screen and you can type in 8,000 feet and hit return and that is now entered. Uh, down here is our barrow and we can figure that out by pulling up our, oops, oh no, I haven't got that loaded, I'm sorry. We can't use my plug-in for getting barrow because of the weather, I'll explain later. So what we have to do is come back over here and take a look at the chart and go up to Bellingham by just clicking that. And we'll put the 
cursor right next to that, it says that our barometric pressure is 2994. So again, just tap that, 2994. Hit return. So that's done. You can see we've got our minimums established, which we did before. Uh, in this aircraft, you can't uh, do anything with the cruise or the uh, course. Uh, it doesn't really have an effect the way it does, say, in a Boeing. So we'll forget about that. And maybe the last thing we can do is add the inset map, like so. Declutter it first, and then change it from topo over to just black and white so it's easy to see. That takes care of that setup. Having done that, now we can go down back down here to our pre-start panel. I'm going to put some buttons on this thing and then walk you through the startup process on this aircraft. The first button is the uh, left and right fuel pumps and then the starter generator can go on. Now I'm going to tap on the start button and then what you'll be looking for is this NG indicator on the uh, G1000. When that gets up to 9%, we'll come back over and tap on the, uh, the uh, I can't read it there. Hold on a second. If I can't read it, you can't read it. The igniter. So that's the drill. We're going to wait for the N, uh, N2 indicator to get up to 9% and we turn on the igniter. When it gets to 15%, we are going to come down here and change the condition lever from full off to idle from here up to here, like so. That's at 15%. Prop can stay back here at zero. Throttle can stay back there idle, low idle. We've got our fuel selector on right and that will be uh, uh, switched automatically during flight and I'll show you in a minute how that's done. We're only going to be at 8,000 feet so we really don't need to use oxygen for this flight. We might just want to ramp up our temperature a little bit. That's about it. Maybe a low fan. Okay. So come over here and tap on start. N2 starts climbing, we wait until it gets to 9, and then we press the igniter. There goes the igniter, we wait till it gets to 15, and up comes the condition lever. To that position, and the prop starts spinning. Vroom! Off we go. Let's settle in nicely. Let's get all the uh, instruments up. The ITT has gone up to about 950 and then come back down to 647 now, which is fine. The NG settles in at 54%. Torque is at 10.1. RPM right now is 2E change as I change the throttle. You can see our fuel indicator down here. Volts is a little shy of 28. Amps 39.4. Oil pressure at 19, which is fine. PSI for oil is 99%. It's great, right in the green we want it to be, so we're in good shape. We can then come over here start to turn on some lights and the other switches. We can turn on the fuel auto select. That's that dial I showed you earlier. It'll allow it to switch tanks automatically. Pusher, autopilot switch, trim, and pressure. Pressurization uh, is fine. We're not really going high enough to need that, so we could have left it off, but it's okay to turn it on. All right, uh, taxi lights. Strobe, nav, beacon, de-ice boots, prop heat, window heat, inertial map. I'm sorry, that's inert set. And the 
PDX stall. Let's look a little closer at that. Intercept and PITO, stall heat, yeah. So those all go on. That's that. Uh, the last thing we want to do is to check the frequency of our approach. It's an ILS approach, so we've got a frequency of 110.10, .10, and what we'll do then is come back in here and we'll change this indicator right here. There. This is the scratch pad, if you will. So 110, just by putting the cursor over there and scrolling up to 110, to 10, like so. And over to the little arrows here, and now you're entering it into the system. So now our system is armed for the proper frequency of the runway at Yakima. Last thing we can do is lower the flaps one notch. Let's take a look outside of that. There we go. Fine. And we no longer need our external generator. Tap this button and make that go away. And there we are, ready to roll. Got my favorite passenger with me today. Okay, we're going to come out here, taxi over to runway 16. Just take a look on X airports and uh, zoom in a little bit. See where we are. We're right here. We're going to come over here and taxi to the right, down here to the apron, and onto runway 16. Now, with certain aircraft, you'll notice that X airports will give you a, a red route line which is kind of nice. It doesn't do that with every aircraft. won't do it with the Zebra. But it does do it with this one. Okay, jumping back in here, let's uh, give it a little push. Now, in order to make the aircraft move, I first am going to increase the prop pitch up to full prop mode. And then I'm going to keep the condition lever kind of in the center, not full condition just yet. And then we release the park brakes. And you'll see we start to roll nice and smooth. Now as I increase the uh, condition lever, it starts to rotate the prop a little faster and we start to move nice and slowly, nice and well controlled. If you didn't do it that way, you'd be rocketing too fast, you'd have to use your brakes, and uh, it just becomes difficult to operate the aircraft under that. On runway, one, six. Condition lever full. Power up. And we're looking for about 85, 90 knots. For rotation. Seventy. Five ninety. Rotate. Gear up. heading straight onto the line right now as it is, so let's hit the AP, and we'll go to VS, I'm using my cursor here and hitting the VS button, and that gives us the VS rate, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even see the window pop up, 
All right, so let's do about, uh, I'll try it again. Let's do about uh, 1,500. So that should be sufficient. Great. Go back on the prop pitch a little bit. Downshift it. Oops, forgot to turn on the landing lights. My bad. first weight point. Part of our sit. Pilot takes care of that nicely. Baker in the distance. Now, one thing we can do here, it's nice on this particular model, is by tapping various areas of the screen, you can pop this up. And what I like to do is just put your cursor down here in the lower right corner, and you can shrink the screen a nice comfortable position and then you can do the same thing over here try and get them about the same size now it's pretty close put this guy over here subsequently now when you get that upper band the navigation band here and, and on this side as well then you will pop that or make it go back. There's yeah. This is uh, the North Beach of uh, West Seattle. My daughter used to live right down about here. No longer lives in Seattle. There's a ferry right over here that goes over the Danbury. Yeah, there it is. See that on the, uh, on the chart, this brown splotch here. It's 14,000 feet. You get, get a different perspective on Rainier depending on how you rotate your camera. It's because of the way I've got X-Plane set up. It magnifies things on the side of the screen a little bit. Pretty realistic portrayal of that mountain. Looks just like that. For those of you who have never been to Seattle. out there. Okay, let's take a look at how close we're getting. 4.45 to the top of the set. So that means we can now activate our VNAV. And again, I'm going to push this button right here and you keep your eyes right up in this vicinity. VPATH, not VS, VP. VPTH VPath indicates that our VNAV system is functioning. It's armed. 
Now, as we get closer to the top of descent, we've got about four minutes to go, um, you will see a couple of things happen. You will see an indication on the left side of the speed tape, or the altitude tape, I should say, that uh, you're going to be descending, and that is in the form of a little arrow. And then you'll see an indication on this side of your rate of descent. So uh, I'll describe all of that when it comes. We've got about three plus three and a half minutes or so for that time. Okay, we've got about a minute to go, and when that gets to about 58 seconds, you should see something pop up right there. There you go. That's your VNAV indicator. And when this comes down and gets to about mm, probably 25, 30 seconds, you'll start to see this arrow drop. And as it reaches the center line, you'll see a number appear in this black band, and that, too, I believe, drops right down to where your target descent rate is. We'll see. And there's no further adjustment required. Once you've reached this target altitude of 7,000 feet, the next time you have a uh, increment of descent, it'll do it automatically. The, the indicator will pop up. You don't have to tap VNAV again, anything. Just sit back and watch the, watch the show. So here we come on top of descent. And now we've got time to bottom of descent. You can see our rate indicator drop down to where the arrow is, and we are descending, so we need to cut back on the throttle so we don't build up excessive airspeed on our way down. the approach system by hitting the APR button. It puts G, P, slash V in the nav panel. And we've acquired locator, as you can tell, because it's green. This dot right here, that little guy as it's dropping down, when that reaches the center line, this GS right here will turn green and we will be on control of the light slope. So, given all of that, we're going to drop our speed just a little bit. 50 and then lower some flaps. Keeping up the airspeed a little bit gives a little more stability.
Okay, we'll turn off the crop reverser. We'll see what taxiway this is. A3, I think we were looking for. And that's what it was. First, clean things up here. And we'll just go straight ahead. Okay, brakes. And the uh, first thing we do is douse the engine. If we do that by lowering the condition lever all the way. I'll show you that. Bring the prop back down to idle and I'm going to take the condition lever and just do that. And that pretty effectively kills the engine. Let me come down here and turn the lights off. And turn some of these switches off. Have the, uh, the igniter on. Probably could have turned that off. The uh, standby alternator stays on. Fuel auto select comes off. Fuel pumps. And the avionics. And the last but not least, the battery. So that's about it. Uh, we can uh, open the door and hop outside. <clears throat> Hop outside on the right side. That's it. That's our flight down to Yakima in the <clears throat> the Aerobasque Epic EG1000. E, e for Epic, G for Garmin 1000 nav system. One of my favorite aircraft to fly. It's really terrific. Goes like a bat and uh, lands nicely. Very powerful. Pretty good visibility too in that nice glass cockpit. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. And that's the procedure for VNAV landings for uh, allowing the aircraft to descend automatically to programmed altitudes that you do in the setup. Pretty simple once you get it right. The key thing of course is to put in your descent altitude into the speed bug before you start your descent. If you do what I did the first time out and you leave it at your cruise altitude, nothing will happen and you will be pulling what little hair you have left out. That's it. This is Steve. I appreciate your joining me. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, criticisms, good things, bad things, well, forget the bad things, just good things, please. Put them in the comments below. If you like what you see here and you want to see more of it, and slam on that subscription button. Uh, you can also hit the little uh, thumbs up if you like what you see. Uh, you know all that stuff from YouTube. Same drill. So I will see you soon with another epic flight. Maybe not in the epic, maybe in something else. Thanks for joining me. Have a good day.